Room with your hosts, Coach Casey and Damo. All right, guys. Welcome to Inside the Locker Room. I'm Coach with my co-host, Damo. Damo, what's going on, brother? Uh, I'm doing good, man. I'm inside the locker room, so nothing, nothing makes me happier to Is be in the Is that where studio. you are? You're inside the locker I'm room where I just the... said we were? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, big happenings coming up. Um, in another week or so, we got uh, Tyson Fury versus Deontay Wilder part due. Yeah, yeah, February 22nd. You can catch that fight. Um, yeah, so like an, another week or so. <laughs> This guy, man. <laughs> I don't know how to tell time, folks. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what day it is. Uh, but no, it's a big fight, man. Um, I'm, I'm excited to watch it just as a boxing fan. You know, yeah. it, um, as someone who watched the Mayweather Pacquiao fight and then having gone on and watched the, the, the first fight of this, I don't know if you want to call it a series. I don't know if we're yeah. going trilogy yet or not, but, uh, of this, these two guys, it, it was an entertaining fight and it's something I'm, I'm, Interested to see how how it goes. Where Tyson out. Fury came back from the dead. Yes. <laughs> and, and or he bounced off the canvas. The fight, <laughs> yeah. Fin- finished the fight and they went to a draw. Um, you had said before offline that basically he was winning the fight until Deontay Wilder yeah. threw a haymaker out of nowhere and knocked so his ass out. Tyson, uh, for a big guy, he's a very big guy actually. Yeah. He, uh, he's got great feet, man. He moves yeah. around. His head movement is great. Yeah. Uh, and I think in that fight, he was winning. He was definitely winning the fight. Then you get, you get what Wilder does. He just throws one out there. Yeah. Yeah. And it lands. If it yeah. connects, you're, you're done. Yeah, for a dude who's 6'8", 260, uh, Tyson Fury moves around like a uh, welterweight. You yeah. know? Um, it's pretty surprising to see his technique at that size uh, because he's a big dude for sure. Um, but I, I think uh, he's definitely got more skill than Wilder. Uh, Wilder's just got that one punch, and you never know where it's coming from and when it's going to happen. But if he connects, you're done. Lights out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lights out. Somehow uh, Fury turned his own lights back on in that last fight. And, so. and, and that's it, it cracks me up because you call him a zombie because when yeah. he got hit, you yeah. see lights going out. Yeah. His head bounced off it, the canvas. It reminded I was thinking of actually the Terminator when like the Terminator eyes go out yeah. and then they come back on when he comes back to life, you know, and he's just dragging himself towards Sarah Connor. <laughs> That's what I was thinking of was like the lights going out in the eyeballs and then the eyeballs coming back on and you being like, oh, I'm going to die now. He got back up, man. He boxed his way through the rest of the round. I, he, yeah. I, he may have to go back and check this, but I think he may have him saved himself in the round. I mean, he yeah. lost it. but I, Right, because but, he obviously got knocked down. Yeah, but, he saved himself yeah. from being going down two points yeah. or anything else. He went right back to fighting right. when he got up. He didn't just start, you know, holding, kind of yeah. getting into a shell and trying to protect himself. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it'll be another uh, great fight. Um, it's going to be the the same story, right? It's like if Fury can uh, box his game and make Wilder box with him, Fury wins. Yeah. But if he's got to uh, have good defense, if yeah. Wilder if Wilder throws one of those haymakers, man, and connects, it's over. You know, Fury's just got to keep that head moving all fight. You know, that that's really the bottom line to this day. <laughs> to this day. <laughs> to this day. <laughs> So let's kick it out to our guest here in studio with us, Mr. Mixed Martial Artist himself, Klein Wong. What's up? Thank you guys for Klein, having how's me. it going? Not too bad, man. <clears throat> so I've been excited about this for a while now. When I thought about um, doing the show, you had popped into my head because you know I'm trying to reach out to people I know, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, and connect with. And it's crazy in the world of technology <clears throat> how many like athletes there are, and you know, people that are yeah, like, yeah. you know trying to get into fighting and and just definitely. Athletics in general. There's another dude in support who was on American Ninja Warrior. That's awesome. <laughs> you know, Jealous. so so it, it, it's kind of it's, it's, it's kind of funny though when you think about like when you know when you reach out to people you know and make connections and stuff. How you can you know like yeah. bring them yes. <laughs> into Literally. right exactly. It's it, it, it's crazy because I've known for a long time that you're a fighter and that you've been you know training and stuff like yeah. that. So um, so Try. talk about that. Um, how did you get into it? Yeah, um, when I was a kid, I loved two movies, and one of them was Mortal Kombat, <laughs> and so that definitely made me, like, interested. I was, like, five or six years old whenever that came out. I was a huge fan of the game. It has begun. Yes, man, I was huge in the game, so, like, to see it on screen made me really excited, and I wanted to do this, and my parents found me, like, a strip mall Kenpo, uh, like, karate style like martial arts thing and I did that for like four or five years and I loved it and I competed in it and it was kind of fun to me and I didn't understand like when you're a kid you don't really understand like oh maybe I'll like you're not planning for like the future or anything so I didn't really pursue it 
Um, but I think that it definitely, like, at, at such a young age, had such a huge impact on me, and I was so obsessed with it when I was a kid, too, you know, that I think, like, not only did my body develop to, like, throw kicks and stuff a little bit easier maybe than, like, some other people's bodies, but I also had, like, the seed planted there of, like, oh, I know I have, like, a foundation in something. Like, I did this for mm. years, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so when I started training about five years ago at my current gym, uh, I, I just had, like, an affinity for kickboxing just because, like, it kind of came natural to me as opposed to, like, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, which I love, but I have to work very hard at. Mm. Um, and so I was, like biking to work, and I saw, like, the sign for Novo Unia Jiu-Jitsu, and I knew that Novo Unia was a Brazilian team, and Hobson Mora, who's, like, an eight-time world champion, um, was from that team and had an affiliate school over here. He's since changed it to Hobson Mora Nations United, so it's the same initials. Um, so I kind of, like, ducked into there to see, so I was like, oh, man, Jose Aldo trained here and all these fighters that I really liked, and I met my coach, who is my coach now, uh, Lane, and he just kind of had, like, this kind of small program. Maybe it was starting to kind of get off. He was still a brown belt at the time. I think he was a brown belt for, like, two or three months uh, when I first started training there. And um, then maybe, like, seven or eight months into training, uh, our other coach, John, who's uh, younger, who's my uh, the coach that I work closer with, um, like, he has a fight in, in two weeks or so. He's... Um, on February 15th, he's uh, kind of the one who was like, hey, do you want to take a kickboxing fight? So I had just taken a, like a jiu-jitsu match like, for the first time, and it was you know kind of like this thing that I'd maybe been tiptoeing around and wasn't really sure if I should like dive into, you know, because like fighting is such a... Um, some people see like training and fighting, and they kind of like mix us all in together, but like then fighting is kind of like the next step after like not even just competing. It's, you know, there's really bad intentions here. You know, you can... You tend to be a little bit lax, lax when you're training jujitsu because it's kind of like a stoner sport, and everybody's so fun. And it could be like this older guy from down the street, or it could be like this young wrestler savage who's like really into grappling, you know. But you get a little bit of everything. So I think just having that competitive mindset, and then someone just flippantly being like, "Hey, do you want to take a kickboxing fight?" In you know whatever it was, like six weeks, seven so weeks. do you get to, do you separate that in the gym? Do you see you have guys that are... Yeah, that, sure. Okay, because I'm, I'm just thinking, if you're going if you're going against a guy yeah. down the street... <laughs> we, so we try to as best we can, and, you know, the thing is, like, different gyms are going to have, like, different policies on this, unfortunately, and, like, some gyms don't really have a policy, but our gym, we try to have it structured to where, like, one, you always know who you're training with. You know, you ask somebody... Um, how long they've been training or, you know, if we're not wearing, like, the gi, like, the big kimono with the belt, like, it's hard to see. Like, when you're wearing the gi, you can just take a look at someone's belt and be like, all right, I'm not going to smash this guy. Yeah. Or, like, if it's, like, some, like, small, petite girl who's, like, maybe she's pretty technical, but, you know, you can, like, out-muscle her in a lot of positions, you're like, all right, I'm going to focus on using my technique and not mm -hmm. being rude, you know. But sometimes you do get guys who go, man... <laughs> this reminds me. I, I've had guys who go really hard and don't compete like ever, and they're like young guys. They're like twenty two, twenty three. They just want to like, own the gym. <laughs> you're just murderers in the gym, and it's like, man, what are you doing? Like, not only like set the ego thing aside. Like, we don't even have to talk about that. That's too easy. Like, dude, you're murdering your training partners and like wearing headgear. And what was the name of the uh, Danny McBride movie? Yeah, no, 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 no. The, the foot fist way. Yeah, the foot <laughs> fist away. Right thank you. Because that was what that's what popped into my head when you started talking about that was I, Danny McBride I going balls out him. on his students. Like, There's a clip in that movie beating the shit has, out of them. He has the old woman face off against like this huge dude yeah, and he's yeah. like, I want you to go 100%. And uh, I don't think you're gonna like what you see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he basically totally he talks shit to his male student, and like you said, he's got this little diminutive <laughs> old lady going up to him, and the dude just straight knocks her ass dude. out. And he just turned. It, oh my god. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like one of those really bad ones. Yeah. And it's funny. It's one of those. It's funny because it's true things, but then that's like an exaggerated version of what could happen, right? Right. right. Most of the time it's like something I believe that that's injury. what they were going for was for they were sure. kind of they, they were basically making fun of, you know, that type of scenario. For sure. We all see it whether it's at the gym and or or at, you know, a, level a of dojo like too, you know, when yeah. you get into more like the dojo side where it's yeah. like, man, is is 
Is this stuff like working on like hypo- like in theory? But you know, but you when you're at the gym, you see people it? taking themselves way too seriously all the yeah, time, yeah. or doing some shit they shouldn't be yeah, doing. You know, because they're not for yeah. sure. You know, like yeah. we all have our times. For me, it tends to be now more um, when I have a fight that's coming up. I try to have a lot of good laughs in the gym. I try to be the one. I try to you know be one of the personalities that's trying to like make this a positive experience for everybody yeah. and kind of like we're all going through something really physically grueling so let's try and laugh when we can you know that's kind of like my nature as a person but i mean then you see these guys then it really irks me like this guy that i'm talking about when you see these guys who are taking it really seriously when they don't need to when we're mm. training you know but mm. you know maybe they don't even compete it's like, mm. man that's you're going to get someone hurt, and you're not going to have anyone to train. It's like they're just there to get their daily aggression out. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> and, you know, and, and they yeah. might not. They might be totally oblivious to it, yeah. too, man. I freaked right. out on a guy who, like, I thought he was claiming to be oblivious yeah. at first, and then you realize, like, man, this dude just doesn't get it. It's like their unspoken therapy, and they don't even know that. Yeah. You know, and I appreciate yeah. that, too. Yeah, right. No, it's everybody's therapy. But that's why we're all there. For, for guys like that, though, you get into it, and you can see someone get injured. And that, for, that, for sure. that ruins your chance and, to... To have a fight, or sure. or just a display whatever it is. If yeah. you're going on, on, like I said, into a fight or even professional, yeah. you know, you lose a lot of opportunities. Like yeah, that. you do, you absolutely do, man. Because I've been hurt by accident, and mm. I've been hurt um, not on purpose, but by a guy who goes really mm-hmm. hard, who right. was a, a black belt with like 12 years experience, right. and I was like a white belt. So let's talk about that. I want you to talk more about that, but I want to equate it to what Damo and I know uh, yeah. on the football side of For things. Sure. Um, th- in practice, right, you would have guys get hurt, whether it's in camp or, you know, just in between games or something like that, um, going all the way back to high school. But it still happens in the NFL now where uh, typically when someone gets hurt in practice, it's because they're not going full speed. They're going half really? speed when someone else is going full speed. Uh, okay. um, or they're taking it easy, and that's when the field gets you. That's when you tore your knee. That's when you tore your knee. Uh, He tore his knee in a game because um, he was actually taking it off. He was slowing down. Throttling down. The play was the play was basically over, and he was throttling down. And that's when the field monster, the turf monster, tends to bite you. Is when you're not going full speed. Yeah. Um, And he got stuck in a divot. Whereas if he were ran through it, he probably would have been yeah, fine. Yeah. But you find your joints in these really weird, That's loose crazy. situations when you're not thinking about it. And in football practice, what would happen all the time when guys get hurt is you would have that practice warrior, that workout warrior, yeah. going full speed on a drill where the coach has already told us we're going half speed or we're going three-quarter speed or something like that. Yeah. And you still don't even know what that is. You know what yours is, but you don't know what somebody else's half yeah, speed yeah, is. Yeah, that's the thing. It's um, different for and, and so, you know, somebody's going balls out on a practice play and they end up breaking somebody's yeah. arm or leg or something yeah. like that. I want you to talk about how that happens in the MMA gym because – from all of the observing I've done, from the, all the the tough, you know, the the Ultimate Fighter shows and yeah. things like that, when I would see those injuries occur, it was usually when you said by accident a couple of guys are screwing around in the corner or something like that, just messing with each other. When the two serious dudes come through, like with their drill, yeah. and they end up running over somebody in the drill, you, you'll hear about a lot of guys getting thrown or rolled onto somebody's ankle or yeah. knee or something, and like tearing a leg. Um, so, kind of talk about that. Like, where do you see that happen? Yeah, a, a lot of it comes from like, is you know, I. I talk about the guy who like goes too hard and aggravated me but um it's not usually that it's usually one of two things it's usually uh you know people unsupervised going harder than they should and yeah. it's, that might not always be like striking really hard or, or like strength cranking an armbar really hard or strangling somebody hard it might just be like you're using a lot of energy and you're, mm. you're the nature of this workout is intense Mm. so guys will overexert and then overcompensate and then something freak happens like you could step wrong and tear an acl it Mm. could it should just be it's usually not sexy right (laughs) it's usually not like i got kicked in the leg and my knee blew up it's usually like i stepped stepped in a divot and it's the least sexy thing in the world yeah and then the other thing is usually um like miscommunication between partners where one person you know maybe doesn't understand 
the fifty percent thing, or like mm-hmm. the, we call it flow rolling in jujitsu. Yeah. Like, let's just go through techniques. We're not going to crank any submissions. We're going to get in position and then leave, and then I'm going to get something on you, and you're going to get something on me. And right? Just, Transition back yeah, and forth. Yeah. And, yeah. And it's I'll, like in wrestling, it's called chain wrestling, yes. where you basically chain together yeah. moves with each other, and you work from. Too. Yeah, it is. It is. Like it is. But it. basically, the same thing applies because wrestling is grappling. Yeah. It applies in jujitsu yeah. as just well, where you're just warming up with each other and you're trying to get each other in the mindset of okay here's something I can try here's yeah. something I can do but you're doing it at a um, acceptable speed for sure where everyone is usually. kind of coasting you know usually so, yeah um, and it's when you get those guys who are like trying to be a hero or maybe don't understand a lot of times it comes with difference in body type mm-hmm. because um, and and I want to ask you guys about this in football too but so you, I can choose to go with guys who are, like, more my size, but a lot of times, like, it's a class, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, I might have more intensity mm-hmm. than somebody who's a lot bigger than me, but they're kind of just going chill. And so we meet on, a right, on like, the right level. Um, but, a, you know, that's freak accidents happen because of body size. Like, I had my shoulder dislocated when we were drilling. We're going, like, slow, step by step, and this dude... Is, your size, my brother. I love you. And he <laughs> threw his leg up, and I have kind of a bad shoulder, and it's it was probably the worst dislocation I ever had. It was out of the socket yeah. for like ten seconds. It was yeah. brutal. Wow. And it was just from us, just from like the phys- the physics of it, you know. So yeah. that that was a big thing. I was curious though, especially like on the line. Like, is there injury all the time? With yeah. whether it's 100%. internal or like, yeah. you know, I tweet. I, are you ever like one hundred percent going into a game? Yeah. So, so no. <laughs> okay. okay. Most, <laughs> most linemen are 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 uh, just trying to stay at seventy five percent for a whole season. I'm, just, I'm curious you know? why you took the lineman question. Why, why, why didn't I get the lightning question? I, hey, I also don't know all the sports words. I should have probably directed that. Let's, 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 let's see here. Why why did I take the lineman question? Oh, was that a joke? Dude, I didn't that joke went over my yeah. head. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so receiver, defensive in. back. Um so no, mo- most linemen uh, barely make it through three games. What's you know, like, before like, they're is, are the ankles okay? I always think of you guys going at it. Again. So if you ever look at if you ever watch uh, like college football, for instance, every lineman on the line, whether he's got good knees or not, is wearing two thousand uh, dollar knee braces. <laughs> you know that are that are paid for and supplied yeah, by yeah. the facility wow. um, because they're trying to make sure that their linemen don't get rolled up on. The lineman could have perfectly healthy knees. And the schools are trying to keep it that way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So okay. they, they they put the expensive knee braces on, and then for the guys that have ankle troubles, they'll have a very similar bionic apparatus on yeah, their yeah. ankles as well. Tape it up, whatever. Yeah, you, but you could see a center, for instance. Centers are usually the most uh, equipment dude on the team. Like he'll just be full on everything, um, except awesome. for the hardcore centers who just tape up their fingers. Yeah. <laughs> do I've never else. understood that. Yeah. By the way, oh, I, well, some of them just they, they don't care, right? Savages. Like they got, they got like dude, gashes savage. on their elbows just and stuff. Barbarians. Arms are all torn up, and they just have their fingers taped, and that's it. I need and it's just stuff. like the tips <laughs> of the just fingers. Damn, dude. But, but yeah, um, you know, linemen uh, linemen typically you know don't make it through two or three games before they're really messed up. And then uh, it's just a thing of like trying to maintain what you have left to get through the season. Yeah. And worst case scenario, uh, take a couple of weeks off to get a sub in. But you're not um, you're not looking at uh, you know a major offensive lineman missing any time because you only have six or seven on the entire team, and you've got five out there <laughs> at yeah. one time. So so you're kind of in a, a in a spot where. You, you got to play through most, you know, trauma. I think for a lineman, though, it, the possibility for an injury is there every single play. Sure, in, in training is what I'm like so yeah. curious about because yeah, do you have you have to go like hard and like smash. It yeah, yeah, a lot of times and, and, and stuff has changed. It, it's definitely changed over the last twenty years since yeah. um, everything kind of came to the forefront. But when I was in high school, uh, we there was no such thing as like taking uh, time off or, or going half speed or whatever until we got into game preparation. That's when in in the season we would really come down. But leading up to that first game of the season, dude, we were killing each other out there. Yeah. And um, I remember twice a day. I don't my, my senior year was when Corey Stringer died. Do you remember the the Corey Stringer story? Mm-hmm. So Corey Stringer died of heat exhaustion, but he also heard of that. he also had been um, taking those like stacker two pills. It was one of those pills oh, yeah. that was taken off the market because of those the effects. The ones. Yeah. Uh, it had ephedra in it, oh, and yeah. then that was what was killing not just football players but other people in uh, extreme heat situations. So when you're thinking about 
two a days in the summer in football with full gear on. Right, it's not just the heat from outside. When you put shoulder pads and a helmet on, you trap an yep. extra yeah. fifty degrees of heat. Throwing inside. a couple extra pounds to it, too. right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You, you you ever see like when somebody rips off their helmet and all the steam starts coming out of their? It's because um, they have. The lights, the, if, if, yeah. That's why people like to dump uh, water on their that heads makes, and stuff, you know, sense. and get it down in their neck because it is sense. it is literally like if it's a hundred and five degrees outside in August yeah. it, during a two day, it's probably a hundred. 30 degrees under yeah. these shoulders. I never you know? thought of that. that I always uh, thought it was for the camera. So, yeah. <laughs> no, so, yeah. You know, no. So, like, they're they're they move yeah, yeah, no. So they're, so they're literally trying to get some relief. But when that whole Corey Stringer thing happened, my head coach did start uh, trying to back us off and, and have us take it easy, um, at least for moments. He'd for give sure. us more water breaks and stuff. But we were always trying to kill each other. Yeah, I was in Chicago. So, I, one, I, didn't, I did not know that story. Uh, my yeah. coaches did not have anything, any yeah. examples like this. The yeah. danger of so like they, gun helmet and shoulders, a hundred yard football field. Yeah. Go ahead and roll it. Yeah, you know it was, that also, was our punishment. It, it's also cyclical because it depends on what happens in your era, right? Yeah. Like that shit happened when I was a senior in high school, and it was such a big deal. And then right after Corey Stringer died. Uh, within a couple of days, a uh, lineman from Florida State died as well. Wow. Um, so all of this happened within a couple of days of each other during summer two-a-days leading into the season, yeah. which is the most dangerous part of, of the season. Um, and, and it leads to like a shift in best practices. Yeah, like across, right. Across right. the sport. It does, but, it does. But to, to get back to your thing of, of like matchups and things yeah. like that, um, in football, you will – You'll definitely have uh, think uh, you know uh, a matchup where uh, a defensive tackle might only be 260 pounds or something like that, yeah. but an offensive guard is 300 pounds. You know, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so now yeah, you, you you're at a mismatch. But that 260 pound defensive tackle could have a 400 pound bench press, and he could just grab the guard and move him around. Yeah, it's leverage. That's but it, it, it depends on whether you're using good technique or not. For so sure. So it kind of ties into what you were talking about because yeah. if you're if you're tired and you've been getting the shit kicked out of you and you're not using proper technique, you just start banging. Yeah. And when you bang and it's shoulder to shoulder and head to head and stuff, that's when the injuries really start to pile up. But if you're using proper technique and you're taking a step yeah. and popping with your hands and stuff, yeah, yeah. Um, you usually have a pretty uh, good shot of making it out alive yeah. and healthy. Yeah, yeah. You know? So, It'll just be um, like arthritis. But I do, <laughs> I, I do have a relatable, uh, you know, story though with wrestling though, sure. because I wrestled in high school nice. as well, and um, kind of like you were talking about getting matched up with a guy who was a lot bigger than you yeah. and, and and getting hurt, who, who cuts the um, weight maybe a little bit better than yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. I, I wrestled two fifteen in high school, but I was one hundred and eighty nine pounds. The reason why I didn't wrestle one hundred and eighty nine is because the dude at one eighty nine was my mentor, and he was a state champion. Okay, so I ended up wrestling at two. 15 just because I could dominate at 215. Yeah. I wrestled like a, a lower weight class, so I had more uh, skill set. Yeah. I had a, a larger, you know, move set at my disposal um, than the 215 guys did because the fatter 215 guys wrestled like heavyweights, yeah. which was basically a lot of grabbing and head slapping. I ended up being the guy who drew the short straw for our heavyweight champion, though. Uh, Mark Duncan was his name. Shout out to Mark Duncan if you're watching. Um, he uh, he was an absolute monster and a mauler, and he was he was ranked in the state. He was like his goal was to become a state champion. I think he lost in the semifinals when he was a senior, Brilliant. but as a freshman. I had to train with that guy on a daily basis. So I'm a 180, <laughs> maybe 195 pound freshman, and I'm wrestling with a senior who's two, all of 275 yeah. and cuts down to make weight at, at, at heavyweight. And um, I had to roll with him every day. <laughs> And uh, I, I can't tell you. I, I thought um, I thought I blew out my knee three or four times yeah. wrestling with him because tough, tough if he tried to, it, sometimes he would try to head throw me, and I would pop out. And when I pop out, I would basically you know straighten my leg out. Yeah. And if my straight leg hit his hip or his thigh as he was trying to roll me over, it's it was not. like it was basically like you know cutting my leg in half. Yeah. You know, and um, so I never made it through a wrestling season healthy because I had to wrestle that. guy. Guy yeah. For, um, and it was just it was brutal because uh, like he that. was twice my size, and it also it also stunted my growth as a wrestler because I didn't get to um, I didn't get to 
really apply my skill set, you yeah, know, uh, sure. the for way sure that the way that I wanted to against him yeah. because he was a bigger dude and he didn't want to get double legged or you know any yeah. of that stuff. Um, so it's just it's funny because so much of what happens in wrestling is comparable to what happens in uh, jujitsu and just mixed martial arts in general. Yeah, you know, absolutely, and like any sport where you're, it's just you and you. There's it's no decision like it's win or lose. Right. Like someone's gonna lose. Right. Like I, I that's what I love about it is that there's um not as much of a stigma yeah. to like losing because there's so it's impossible to not lose, to not to not have like a hole in your game and in mixed martial arts, you know. In boxing you see it a lot more because like matchmaking is done really well. Um and I think there's Less, it's like addition by subtraction, mm-hmm. right? Like there's less uh, facets to the overall game, mm-hmm. but there's like a meta game within boxing that's that's like scientific mm-hmm. that you have to really get good at. It's really difficult to get good at when head trauma is the name of the game. Mm-hmm. So it's a, it's almost like a race. So you can't you can't train like a hundred percent and then also train with people who are like that much better than you. Like you'll just be their punching bag. Right. Dude. right. And un- you know, unfortunately that'll make you really tough, but maybe not as technical. And like, that's a recipe for disaster. Man, sometimes. I used to hear the stories all the time about Mike Tyson, uh, just beating the snot out of his sparring yeah, partners yeah. Yeah, and dude. his sparring partners would have the full headgear on and not just like headgear, like the Olympic yeah. headgear that was like, you know, six inches thick uh, and things. And Tyson would go in there with no headgear on and just throw bombs and basically give guys bombs. brain damage. And, like, you're talking about a guy in Mike Tyson who, like, it's not like he was only out running around on the streets. Like, this dude was, like, watching tape on yeah. other boxes. Like, he had the technique and he knew, like, what tendencies worked best for his right. body type and what ten- what things worked best on right. other body types. And this dude is just murdering people who come in there and, like, do their ring circles and jab and maybe spar a little bit yeah. and maybe, maybe want to be amateurs, but it's like, you're going against someone it's who, like, funny that you bring that like up. pro. It's funny now. that you bring that up because Lennox Lewis said that in an interview that people don't give Mike Tyson enough credit for how cerebral he was when he dude. was at the top of his game because, yeah, he was a devastating puncher. Yeah. Yeah. Probably until uh, you know Deontay Wilder, probably the most powerful puncher that ever existed sure. yeah. in in the Deontay game. Um, scary, but, powerful. but then, but oh but then, God. on top of that, like you said, there was a very scientific approach to Mike Tyson's game yeah. um, where he studied his opponents, he learned sure. you know, the ins and outs of their weaknesses and their strengths versus his weaknesses, and so even though he went in there and finished a lot of guys really early on and stuff he had in his mind uh, a, a basically a biological clock of For when sure. this fight is going to end For you sure. know, he just didn't always get there because he usually knocked him out yeah. earlier than he initially intended yeah. uh, but but that's, that's his approach, and I remember um, uh, Lennox Lewis talking about sparring with him years before they ever fought uh, when they were fresh out of the Olympics and um, Lennox Lewis basically says that uh, Mike Tyson uh, probably took years off of um, his sparring partner's careers because he ended up sparring with a lot of guys that go on to become yeah. you know famous fighters and stuff because of uh, his approach to sparring was it was balls out you know yeah all, we um, our gym has moved to a new location <clears throat> on Gandhi and we uh, we've gotten a lot bigger and we have a way bigger facility now and our team has gotten really good we have like a small team wow you want to maybe shut that off superstar totally forgot about that <laughs> um. We have like kind of we had kind of like a small fight team and now it's it's grown and yeah we, we've all had so, uh, we had an almost perfect 2019 which you know we're not necessarily like into the record thing but it kind of just as a testament to yeah. like how good we're all getting. I saw the video that you put together of your team. The highlight, yeah, 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 yeah. and that all, was all really the, cool. All the blurry footage was me. <laughs> I am the cameraman. But you, the team. but you put together yeah, the, the the footage as well. I mean, sure. like you put the whole the package together, yeah, man. The uh, chain by Fleetwood and I Mac saw too. I saw how that. Uh, like caught fire on Facebook because basically everybody within your team was like sharing that yeah. and then like resharing it. Yeah. And um, there, um I, I saw there's definitely a lot of camaraderie in your gym. That's for I sure, it, dude. Because you guys are really um, respectful of each other, and I saw a lot of just on social media people trying to build each other up yeah, rather man. than what happens on team sports. This is what's so funny about individual sports. Oh, I had questions about this for sure. Yeah, no, no, this it. is exactly <laughs> th- there's such a weird dynamic here in individual sports. You're still on a team, 
for but, sure. But your but your fight you doesn't affect yourself. their oh. outcome, right? Exactly. But if you're like wrestling, for instance, or in a karate tournament or a kickboxing tournament, it is your nation versus their nation, right? Your your gym versus I'm on that level too. Right, it's even right. Scary. Exactly. You know? um, but there is this massive like I don't know what it is. Um, camaraderie between the fighters and stuff where they really support each other and yeah. they, they go to bat for each other and, and you know they help each other out in any way possible but they champion each other yeah, right that, that's um, a really cool thing in team sports <laughs> like especially football that is not the I case it, especially dude. today uh, you, it's a team game and you have to coexist in order to you know conquer the other uh, you know yeah. the, the, the enemy the other team. But Damo can speak to this because Damo was a superstar on on every team for years where um, there's a lot of dissension on a team where, you know, somebody stands out above the rest of the team where um, there's a lot of jealousy and guys will try to tear you down and they do it by any means necessary, whether it's um, verbal and and psychological abuse, you know, like like things like that. Or they just talk about you behind your back and they try to spread, uh, you know, some type of a cancer behind you. Or it could just be as simple as like being happy. Be when something <laughs> doesn't go your way, like when you fuck up yeah. a play or when you like, you know, you're injured. God forbid. Like, so for team sports, I think now to see a team win a championship, it almost has to be there's camaraderie within yeah. the team. You think of the Patriots. Mm-hmm. The I was Patriot just about to say, way. dude. I love right? that people like like Tom Brady just goes to bat for his team. Yeah. He just loves yeah, them all. the Patriot nah, way. The dude, uh, Antonio Brown and Tom Brady was like, yeah, I don't know about all the controversy. We'll welcome him on board. <laughs> <laughs> and like, that went his own way. Yeah. Yeah. He had a cup of coffee with the Patriots. Yeah. Yeah. You, you see, like, how But much Tom Brady made that happen. For sure. And then, yeah. and then he offered to let him live with him until he found a place to live. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, you don't see. I mean, you go back a few years with the New York Jets. Geno Smith got his jaw broken by his own teammate. You know what I mean? Is that's the oh, that's the that. I didn't know that. That. that is the life of a, yeah, a football locker room. Yeah. Hold too. Well, you got to think okay, of it. So, so it, with football, so with you guys, you have weight classes. You have sure. I'm fighting in in this weight class to sure. move up and whatnot. In football, there's a position. So there's mm-hmm. there could be twelve guys. Yeah. Fighting for this one position yeah. that the team will carry maybe four or five total people. Mm-hmm. So out of this twelve, this group of twelve, you guys have to fight it out. The best yeah. man wins, so and then you create that environment. That it's, was a linebacker, and that linebacker did get cut yes, after he did. after he, he, he actually got picked he up broke, again yeah, by someone else. But, but he got cut by the Jets after he broke Geno Smith's jaw because Geno Smith was in his second year as the high draft pick that they had uh, for a quarterback in so, New York. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was that was that was a terrible situation. So it's, it's interesting there because on that team, like you only have that one position, which you might have a couple guys who are good for that position, right? right. But. There's only like when you're in the middle, like when the clock is running. There's only one guy in that position. Maybe. Depends on the position, maybe, but yeah, yeah, maybe there's mm-hmm. like two or three or something. Mm-hmm. Um, but on fight day, it's like all right. On my fight team, maybe there's like four guys in my weight class. We're all training. We're all grateful that we have someone to train with. Like I've trained with a lot of people who weigh more than me or are bigger than me, and it's kind of tough sometimes because. I can't go a full blast when I'm hurting, when I'm, like, striking because I don't want to hurt them. But, like, them going 50 or 80 percent is, like, enough to stop me or, like, Mm -hmm. make me have to change my game plan to kind of deal with them. And it's maybe not what I'm going to do in the fight against somebody who I know I'm taller than, who's my weight class, and who I know I can maybe grapple more. Um, But we don't, we usually don't fight on the same day. And, like, it's so rare for teammates to ever be in a position where we have to compete against each other directly. So a lot of it becomes more, like, egocentric, but you're supposed to check your ego at the door. So a lot of that stuff gets squashed internally. I can't imagine having to like go for the quarterback position against Tom Brady or someone. Uh, so you even saying that makes me and just you just, puts me in the headspace. So game day you suit up, right? You tape yeah. up, you put all yeah. your cleats on, you're yeah. ready, your family's in the stands, yeah. and then you're watching the starter. I'm right? just about yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, and you're yeah. sitting like, alright, well, yeah. maybe... Maybe, Maybe when yeah. we go back out, and then the you stand next to the coach. Maybe next coach. So, <laughs> so, so there's a very similar dynamic in wrestling again, um, where 
the wrestling team might have forty dudes on it. Yeah. But only the wrestling's crazy. Only the ten or twelve guys dress. Yeah. Right. Um. On, from varsity to JV, uh, each each squad has their own you know weight classes. Um. One guy represents the weight class, but you might have six or seven guys in your weight class. Yeah. And I, and I want to get back to the mixed martial arts thing with you with the training part, uh, because I was thinking about this with wrestling. Um. Was I had a guy who pushed me really hard to start. Like, yeah. he wanted to meet. He wanted to get to the meets. Yeah. You had to wrestle off to get to the meet. And I was undefeated against all of my own teammates because uh, yes. they couldn't beat me. Yeah. And I had this one guy who always came so close to beating me. And it's like every given week he got better and better That's and tough. better to where – uh, he actually had me pinned for uh, 10 or 15 seconds where he was just running off back points and I wouldn't let my shoulder go down so I didn't lose. Yeah. Um, and then I basically just waited until he tired out from trying to pin me and I rolled him over and put him in a half yeah. and beat him like that. But it was the toughest test I ever had um, trying to make it to a meet and getting to dress. And uh, what would happen to everybody else who didn't get to dress is they would have to sit in the stands in warm ups and just cheer on the team. Yeah. So so you get to this thing of like I hate that mofo. Like <laughs> I'm gonna you. beat him one day because he's terrible and I'm better than him even though I've never beat him before. <laughs> and so my question to you, <laughs> my, exactly. My question to you about that was: Is there somebody in the gym that pushes you that um, you have like a, a uh, almost like a budding rivalry with? Um, I wouldn't call it a rivalry because the first off, I, I like I get uh, I'm a pretty self motivated guy, so I like to push myself. I draw a lot of inspiration from my teammates, um, and they definitely take me to those places in my training sessions where like like I've cried after training sessions for sure. Like, uh, albeit like maybe once or twice, but there have definitely been days where I go and I'm just beat down because maybe it's like the middle of like a hard training uh, week or a hard training month or something. Maybe I have a competition coming up and I'm just getting humbled by people. <laughs> like brutalized. I gotta I gotta be honest with you. I um before I knew that you were into mixed martial arts and I first started working with you, I would see you come to work all the time with, like, black eyes. <laughs> and, and your face would be all messed up. And for the longest time, until I found out that you were into mixed you martial arts and you were training, I, I thought something horrible was going on in yeah. your life where you were just, like, getting abused to no end. I was end. having the time of my uh, life. And then, I find, and then I find out that you actually love getting your face mashed in because you're, you're out there, you know, beating Not the crap out of those words, man. But, like, yeah. Like, <laughs> but you wore your black eyes like a bad of honor. Yeah, like every I'm time really you like came sh- to work, yeah. you'd be like, "Oh yeah, man. I mean, it's nothing. It's um the very first time I came into work with a black eye. Actually, I didn't know I had a black eye because it was um it was mostly on like the corner on, on like the eyelid yeah. part. And so when I when my eyes were open, I didn't like necessarily see it. And like uh, maybe I didn't like check the mirror that day before <laughs> I left the apartment. Um and Sarah. Sarah J was like sitting next to me and she was like, are you wearing eyeliner? And I was like, what? And I blinked like that and she was like, what's wrong with your eye? And then like Chad, yeah. big mouth Chad right, came yeah. over and was like, yeah. oh snap, you got yeah. a black eye? Yeah, Son, what right. happened? You've been yes. fighting. You know, the last kind of, guy like, you want anybody to know for anything. Sure. Yeah. And like yeah. I was self-conscious that day and then I, you know, people in our office like don't really care about that kind of stuff. Like they yeah. give you beers on Fridays when it's time to check out. So it's like, all right, they're, they're pretty cool about it i don't care about it everybody had their one thing we we're kind of freaked out but then we would start getting new employees and i they yeah, would keep know explaining me, it and i just be like like in the morning I'm, I'm either super good or i'm super like pouty and i'd have people like seeing a really angry looking guy that's why when i first met you i black just, eye when i first met <laughs> you I, I didn't ask i was yeah. just like oh poor kid yeah, i know right? and like, dude, look at me you like know? do not think fighters <laughs> So, it's, so you're just like, what is this artist's stressed, abusive lifestyle like? What is he creating? Yeah. He must be a sculptor, you know? Um, <laughs> no, dude, okay, so to get back to that, because I actually do want to highlight this. Um, there's no one that I consider my rival, because the things that, the times that things have gotten heated have been with usually people that 
are less experienced than me and who are going harder than I want to go with them. Like, I would say that I'm, and I would hope that my training partners would say this, I'm a pretty good guy to, like, spar with, whether it's just grappling or whether it's MMA or kickboxing, because I'll give you good looks if I know you're a, if, you know, if you're on the fight team, like, mm-hmm. and you have a, you have something coming up, I'm going to give you good looks, I'm going to try and kick you in the head. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know I'm not the one who's, like, going to continue if you get hurt mm. or stumbled. Like, you know, I'm, I'm here for your safety as much as my own safety. You're not the guy trying fun. to make a name for yourself no, for the other fighter. Or the guy who doesn't understand, yeah. like, you know. And a lot of it, I wish I could say a lot of it's ego. A lot of it's just guys don't really understand, like, there's percentages of power that you can throw with. Like, mm. it doesn't have to be 100% or shadow boxing. Like, mm. it can be, like, you know, you can go 50% and mm. kind of just let people know they're open. It's tough when you don't match and your partner is overwhelming you with aggression and you get flustered, right? So then you start throw if you're less experienced, you start kind of just throwing back and it's almost instinctive. And it's as much as it's their physical fault, they don't know any better. So it's not something I like to lose my temper over. But as far as like rivalries, I would say there's, you know, there's not really any like in our gym. Um, we're all pretty humble so. and we all keep each other humble, but we also like, we all have our own weight class and like, the guys who I'm, the guys who might see be like chomping to get in my position, if there is a position that I have, which I don't think that it's it's you know guys who I know I can beat right now. So what about outside your gym? And any of the fights that you've had, any of them that that have gone spilled over a little bit, maybe in the in the weigh in or um, anything. Dude, okay, so this was my first MMA fight. It was almost a year ago now. It was like in March, um, and it was. I was supposed to fight, uh, a bunch of us were fighting in March. In the beginning of March, we were all supposed to fight four of us. And um, it was going to be, I think, all of our first MMA fights, actually. Maybe one of us was coming back for, the, for a second, but he had, he had lost. So he, was trying to get, he was trying to get that win. And um, my fight got scrapped. So my, my coach found me a fight for two weeks later, and it was same day weigh-ins, which I do for jiu-jitsu, and I hate. <laughs> so I, and, you know, I started, like, dieting less and trying to get down to, like, it kind of changed the dynamic of my last, like, three weeks of the, of the training sessions because it was a lot more about, like, living at that weight comfortably right. and healthily, and then... Do you fight at 155? I fight at 135. Holy yeah, cow. I, I usually cut about 12, maybe 15 pounds this last wow. one. And you're 6... I'm 6'2". Six three? Two. Okay, six two. all right. Wow. Um, so, so you are about the rangiest 135-pounder yeah, yeah, yeah. I've I, ever I, seen. Um, um, yeah. Always taller. And guys are usually more compact, so that like their muscle shows more, and they and it get like it doesn't get in my head, but I do get a little bit sad. I'm like, Damn, dude, I wish I was. Shredded. Well, they, they probably have a wrestling background too, being that oh, small, a lot being that small. Um, yeah, the, this particular guy I think was just scrappy, maybe like a more of a striking like affinity. But um, we were fine. Like we went, and I I drove to like Lake City, Florida. It was like a four hour drive. It was terrible. Um, drove. Hadn't eaten in, like, a day. Was at 135, you know, and we went, weighed in. Guy was fine. You know, we, like, shook hands, and I was like, he was like, oh, you know, it was was our first fight, uh, first MMA fight. I'd done kickboxing. And um, it was whatever, no hard feelings. He's like, oh, yeah, you know, I don't, no hard feelings or whatever. And we fought, and the fight didn't last very long, and I won. And... (laughs) He stormed out of the cage, and then after, like, he, so he stormed out of the cage before the ref even grabbed my hand. To, like, he didn't even, dude, he didn't even, like, right after the, I think he got up and left. It was crazy. I didn't even So notice. hard feelings. Yeah. <laughs> so he was <laughs> upset, and he attacked me on Facebook, too, after, mm-hmm. to, to tell me why and justify himself. And I was like, dude, the thing... The, well, what was his reason? Okay, so the fight lasted 37 seconds. <laughs> okay. Um, that, that, that's a good reason to storm The out. fight lasted 37 <laughs> seconds. We clinched up almost right away, and I need him twice, and then he put me on my back, and... I like anyone who knows me in jujitsu knows yeah. I would. I don't prefer to be on my back because that's a bad position. But yeah. I'm like almost always put there, so I've developed a pretty effective game there for sure. for my level. And I um, set him up in a triangle choke. And I knew you fell. triangled this guy. So I, I remember well, this so fight. I, I set him up in a triangle yeah. choke, and then he flipped over. And I was um, I had kept the triangle lock on, and I had his arm, and I was trying to like hammer fist him. I, I guess I thought I was going to try and TKO him. And my yeah. coach is yelling. Um, actually, I heard my coach's girlfriend in the in the crowd. My coach is yelling, like, take the arm, take the arm. Yeah. So I hit him again, take the arm. And I felt it extend to where it's fully locked. And yeah. I 
pulled a little bit more to let him know, and he did like what we call the Brazilian tap, which is like one tap. Yeah. And he did like one tap, and we made eye contact. And yeah. like it's dude, it's etched in my mind. I hope head trauma does not take this from me. We made eye contact in like a moment where only we knew what was happening. Mm-hmm. And I was like, dude, like I knew you just tapped once, yeah. but you're like, he's also like still fighting the yeah. arm, and I'm like. All right, so I, I kind of I'm gonna pull, break it. I pulled yeah. back more, and I felt yeah. it, like I felt it click, you know, yeah. like a couple times. Right. And then he's like tapping violently, and the ref right. the ref comes in, and like the first thing I did was I sat up and I was like, "Dude, are are you okay? Is your arm okay?" He didn't say anything to me, and kind of went like this. So I just got up and like maybe um, celebrated a little bit more than I should have. <laughs> yeah, and you jumped on top of the cage and started screaming I, like a wild. I didn't man. jump and like sit on the cage, which no, but but you, but you climbed teammate, the cage, which teammates have done, yeah. ill, ill advised. Yeah. Um, but no, I was most upset because I I, I spiked my mouth guard for Gronkowski. <laughs> he he re- <laughs> Rob Gronkowski retired the day after. Yeah. But anyways, um, did you so stole I, his move? I, I got one in there, and then he was like, "That's it. I'm never going to do it better." Um, but this dude didn't stay in the cage and. There was a guy that I had made, uh, you know, kind of like cool acquaintances with uh, in, the, in the locker room before the fight, and his fight was like two after mine, so I was staying to watch him. And I was standing there, my coach and his girlfriend, everybody's pretty happy. They don't serve liquor at this event because we're in an, um, like a military, you know, fortress or whatever. Yeah, it's the old armory, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 the armory, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And um, this arm aggressively grabs me from behind and I thought it was like my coach or his girlfriend because I was literally talking with them and it's him and I was like so taken aback and the first thing I said to him was the last thing I said to him which was like oh my god dude are you okay is your arm okay because bro I know and you know that that thing popped a little bit like are you okay and I was trying to be I was, like, genuinely concerned. And, dude, the first thing out of his mouth were, I want a rematch. <laughs> I was, like, so taken aback by it. And I was, like, rematch. I was, like, what? I was, like, shaking his hand because I was, like, trying to, like, give him daps. And he just went for the handshake. I was, like, what? He was, I want a rematch. And I was, like, oh, yeah, sure. Like, yeah, yeah. fine. Uh, and, like, it was, I was super, like, caught off guard. And I probably looked like I didn't know what the fuck I was talking about. And he, like... I was like, yeah, um, yeah, maybe uh, you drive to Tampa because I don't want to ever make this drive again. And he like w- skimpered off. It was his team that held the promotion. We were the first fight of the night. His coach was cool. They invited me to come train with them after and everything. But like, he was just this weird guy. And he went on Facebook and was like, "What you did when I tapped and you knew I tapped, but you kept cranking. That was a really terrible thing to do." So, so I'll step in because uh, you don't stop until the referee stops yeah, the fight. Say, yeah. Because if you had given up on that arm bar and he had taken he position on you, position. then you're in a terrible position, and no, he's I'm probably pounding your face in. They tell so, us in the rule meeting, you don't stop yeah. until I get yeah. in between you. And and I I know she's got her haters, but Ronda Rousey used to yeah. say all the time because of what happened to her in a fight where a girl tapped and she let up, then yeah. the girl got on top of her and started trying Just to you know pound her. Right. yeah right and so she said from that point on yeah. I'm never gonna let go until the referee stops the fight yeah and how many arms did she break a ch- all of them of her, 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 first, <laughs> all of her first seven or eight fights <laughs> right. were all first right. round arm bar and it was because crazy. it was because a, a, a girl tapped and and uh the ref didn't see it yeah and Rhonda basically gave her yeah. you know her arm and sometimes it's an instinct too right. from training because you just you, I don't want to step on anybody, anybody's toes right you know I still think it's messed up though if you tap man don't come after me if you after you yeah. tap it, it was yeah. it was beautiful and I screenshotted all of it because this dude um, friend request like got connected with my coach's girlfriend because she just makes friends with everybody after fight she's a nice girl and um, you fought my friend Klein this weekend oh blah 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 and he was like yeah we'll have to get a rematch in. and she, <laughs> she was like I don't think that's gonna happen yeah. Because why would it didn't last very long, right, yeah. and like why would he do this? And you also yeah. didn't stay in the. It's ring not like you guys went the won. distance, yeah. and, bro. Right? Yeah, it wasn't right. even wasn't, wasn't even close. Right? And um, it started this whole thing where like all of my teammates started diving in on this one Facebook thread, and yeah. I didn't say a word yeah. to it. And it was like one of the most like heartwarming things, obviously. But like to loop it back around, like we were uh, that was the closest I got to bad blood. You know, never things at the weigh-ins. There's always like I'm, solemn. 
silence at the way. I'm curious to see once this episode airs. <laughs> His response on Facebook. <laughs> um, <laughs> dude, I, I, I should tag him. No, I love yeah. um, But, you know, I like to Rematch be... Rematch is guaranteed. After the fight, I like to be... Like, all this anxiety is gone. Like I like to be, like, cool with people if I can, you know? Like, I mean, it's I'd a like sporting event, right? It's, yeah, not, it's yeah. not like a, I, I don't like you, we're fighting. Yeah, you know? it's, 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 a it's weird event. because you come to compete with bad intentions. Like, if you're doing it like there's no right way to do it i think but like if you're for me if i'm doing it right like some part of me has to be like i'm going to create art and i also want to you're trying to be the only one who walks away from the cage yeah Yeah. i go in there knowing like it's it's not that like i want to beat this person up it's more like dude if they have their way they're Mm -hmm. gonna do that to me i mean it's the same in football i mean uh, pre-game for sure i'm off on the side of the field i got the headphones in i'm not paying attention to to the opponent i I got nothing against you. I just right now for yeah, these yeah. sixty minutes, yeah. it's you against me. And I'm going to win. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to win. The moment it's over, we can hug, we can shake hands, we can pray, we can do yeah. whatever we need to do. And I, you know, so that's where it comes with like the I love my team. Like, there's not really much rivalry. We're like a, we're more like a tribe, dude. Like, we'll all go to war. Like, we'll all, regardless of wake. Like, we will all go to war for one of us. And when we all when one of us goes to war, we all go to war because as much as it is a team sport, like I've done individual sports like track. Um, And as much as it is, like, dude, you could train for track on your own. Mm. As much as it is an individual sport, like, you get, you fight alone, but you don't get there alone. Mm. You couldn't possibly get there alone. And you see these guys that go in independent, no gym, and they Mm. get starched in, like, dude, I'll never forget this. My second kickboxing fight took 10 hours, right, in the back between the start of the event to, like, my fight. And I was in the same locker room as my opponent, so we're, like, this close, and his coach is talking to me about how the fight's not insured after midnight. Y'all shouldn't even, and I just get in my head. So I go out there to take a minute and get some air and, like, see my, my teammates who came to, like, see us all at the event. And I walk out, and there's, like, some 22-year-old dude, who's probably at, like, 170 or 185. Looks like it might have been 185, but I'm a skinny guy, so it might have been 170. Um, there's this, like, 22-year-old kid who looks pretty muscular, and there's this dude who, like, is 40. Like, I think he was 42, but, like, looks 40. Like, didn't even look like he might be, like, oh, 33 or something. Maybe he's just got a lot of s- s- scar tissue on his face. Uh, no, dude, because, like, I think... Someone had said something in the background, or I heard something in the crowd, like, oh, that's the guy from Gracie whatever. Like, he, he's, you know, he's older, but this is his first fight. He's always wanted to do that. It was insane. They were spinning it like it was, like, his fairy tale story. <laughs> and this dude got starched in eight seconds. Took one punch, <laughs> right? Windmilled around. The kid who hit him didn't even pursue it, I think, because, like, he knew. And you got to think... I'm sitting there stressed out yeah. about the violence, yeah. and I walk out to yeah. be like, let me see my teammates, and I'll yeah. see some good fights, you know, I'll see it's not actually that bad, and then, like, I see this guy windmill around, bump into the cage, and then fall back so hard, like, his head hit the canvas so loud that I heard it over this mm-hmm. crowd, and I was like, oh, no, and I saw him get taken out on a stretcher, oh, oh man, and I was like, that wow. doesn't, well, so, well, that so doesn't that's help. the opposite of a Cinderella story <laughs> that they were going for with Dude him, was like, 42, and I was like, yeah. man. And well, with that, do you want to plug your gym in? What's the name yeah, of your gym? It's, uh, South Tampa Jiu Jitsu, RMNU South. We're on a right by West Shore and Gandy in uh, South Tampa, Florida. And Coach Lane Andrews is our head instructor. And uh, my friend, my teammate, my coach is uh, John too. Any fights coming up? Um, so I just had a fight in November, and I broke my I broke two toes and fractured the metatarsals in my left foot. Um, and I won by decision, but I didn't. I don't think I felt it. So I, I, I think it was just a bunch of repeated kicks. Um, so I'm hoping to get back to training in like a week or two. I've just been I've just put on shoes last week and it still mm-hmm. kind of hurts to walk. But I want to I want 2020 to be like a violent year. So I'm, <laughs> I'm hoping to come back maybe in April. Um, March might be a little bit too soon mm-hmm. because it still hurt. Like I, I can't run and I can't um, I can't impact things. So mm-hmm. it's like running and kicking. Uh, it's hard to have a training camp. Um, but a- April for sure. I would like to take another kickboxing fight and then um, hopefully get out pretty quick and then go into another MMA fight. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, stay tuned to to the locker room. Um, we'll definitely drop the info on those yeah, on these fights. Absolutely, man. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Let us know what the dates are and we'll plug yeah, it for you. Thank for you sure. guys for having me. I appreciate. It. Yeah, we appreciate it, Klein. Listen for uh, Klein Wong and my co-host Demo. I'm Coach Casey. Thanks for tuning in to Inside the Locker Room. Catch more original content like this at youtube.com forward slash inside the LR.
Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.